That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we're going to go through and talk about some of these running back rankings for week 11. We're going to do this as a tier list, and I'm not going to lie. This week's a little bit tough because a lot of these top-end running backs, they just have brutal matchups. But nonetheless, before we get into it, let's go through, let's give away some Fantasy Vlog Network hats. You know we give these away every single day for free on every single video. And yeah, our first winner is going to come out from Cole and Surge for today. And of course, thank you so much for being a part of the vlog and supporting the channel. To win your free Fantasy Vlog Network hat, all you have to do is go down there and drop a like on a video and leave a comment to get entered in. Every single time you do that, you get entered in to win a Fantasy Vlog Network hat. And also, you can just go get your Fantasy Vlog Network hat by by deciding to support the show on Patreon. Of course, everybody knows this by now. On Patreon, you get our rest of season rankings updated every single week, our dynasty rankings, get in the dynasty league, get a podcast of your team, get a fantasy vlog network app. There's so much stuff on Patreon. More importantly, if y'all really want to have some fun, go sign up for Underdog Fantasy. When you sign up for Underdog Fantasy, the sponsor of this channel, and you make your first deposit, they match you dollar for dollar on that pop deposit up to a $100 one. So please take advantage of that. They have really cool drafts that you can get into. Literally, they do weekly drafts where if you want to draft the team just for week 11, you go, okay, I, I want some Najee Harris this week against the Los Angeles Chargers. You can go through and do that. And also they have at the same time, a ton of cool player props that you can check out. I don't need to show you what a fantasy draft looks like. You know what a fantasy draft looks like, but I mean, here you can see a ton of these cool player props that they'll have listed. And like we said, when you make that first deposit with promo code flock, they'll match you dollar for dollar up to a 100 when you use promo code flock. And of course you can find that link down there in the description of the video. And yeah, let's go through. Let's dive into these running backs. Let's lead it off with Najee Harris at our running back one spot. I know not many people are wanting us to talk Najee Harris here. I know a lot of people want it to be Taylor. A lot of people want it to be Christian McCaffrey. We'll get to them in a second. With Najee Harris, the thing is he's going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. Do you all have any idea how bad this Chargers team has been against the run pretty much all season. Two weeks ago, we saw Jordan Howard run all over them. This past week, of course, it was Dalvin Cook, so it's not that surprising. Dalvin Cook has a fantastic game. There's no risk whatsoever with this matchup that you have against the Chargers, even if the Chargers lead pretty much the entire game here. I mean, with Ben Roethlisberger being back, I think that we have to be very excited about, at the minimum, Najee Harris getting targets out of the backfield. He's had 56 targets so far this season. He's at 176 rushing yards. You cannot find another running back in the NFL outside of Taylor this past week, but you cannot find another running back in the NFL that has this exact same workload as Najee Harris. And he also has that great matchup. This is a running back that if we're going back and pretty much looking at every single week since week two, I, I mean, if we're going to ignore week one, he was a rookie. He went up against the Buffalo Bills. I think that's fair to do. 19 points, 28, 21, 22, 24, 21, 17, 17. He just has an extremely high floor that I don't really don't think any other running back has access to. And it's also just a fantastic matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. Let's go over to our next running back. Usually, I mean, he would be in his own tier. Usually he's at one and there's no consideration to have anybody else next to him. Christian McCaffrey. Now, the reason we can't put Christian McCaffrey at one and the reason why we are going to have him in the same tier with other running backs rather than in his own one. Because let's remember, 2019, 2020, Christian McCaffrey is averaging like 20% more points per game than any other running back in fantasy. Any other player in fantasy he is crushing to a level that has never been seen before. Now, I don't know if we can see that this year with Cam Newton as the starting quarterback for the Panthers. I was so excited, so excited for Christian McCaffrey to come back in and go back to that usual role. It, I don't know if it can happen. I mean, while yes, I know a lot of people want to say, well, Mason, uh, Christian McCaffrey, he's been a top five running back before with Cam Newton. Yes, that's 100% true. Go back to 2018 here with Christian McCaffrey. He was the running back two overall. Was he getting the 29 points per game? No. I mean, he was actually down there. He was just like any other top three running back that you would have overall. It wasn't like he was just some unicorn at the position. We kind of see this this past week where Christian McCaffrey, he gets down there. He gets to the goal line. What ends up happening when Christian McCaffrey gets stopped at the two? They get Cam Newton coming in. Cam Newton vulturing the rushing touchdown away. I'm worried about that. I'm also worried that Newton may not be checking the ball down as high of a rate as what you would have had from PJ Walker, Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, Taylor Heineke, it doesn't really matter who you'd be looking at. Any of those stationary quarterbacks that, I mean, Chris McCaffrey can pretty much go out there and he can get eight, nine, 10 targets a game out of the backfield, no matter what. Newton, I don't know if it's going to happen. So with Chris McCaffrey, of course, he's still a top three running back. 
I don't know if he can have him in his own tier. And also, it's a tough matchup against the Washington football team as well. So for that reason, CMC is going to be at number two. And lastly, Jonathan Taylor. I, I know Jonathan Taylor in this tier. He definitely belongs in tier one. A lot of people would make the argument that he belongs at the running back one spot overall. I don't know if I can get there. Trust me, I understand the argument. Right now, Jonathan Taylor is the running back two from a points per game standpoint so far this season, only behind Derrick Henry. And if you're looking at the past, I want to say two months now, dating back to week four, is a running back. I mean, 120 total yards, 160 total yards, 150, 110, 120, 200, 120. Like he has such a high floor ceiling combination. It's not even funny. The issue is, I mean, he's been going up and dominating some really bad defenses here. He's been dominating the Texans, dominating the Jets, dominating the Jags. This week, he has the Buffalo Bills. Not sure if you've heard, but the Buffalo Bills have the best run defense in the NFL here. So I don't know if we can have Taylor at running back one, even though I know a lot of people want to. Now let's go down to our next tier of running backs. And let's lead it off with Dalvin Cook. Dalvin, yeah, I mean, he hasn't been exactly what you expected him to be coming into the season. Nonetheless, with Dalvin Cook, this is someone going up against the Green Bay Packers. It's not a great matchup, but the Packers, I mean, they have an elite pass defense. Their run defense is almost whatever. I think that here you will see the Minnesota Vikings have no other option but to lean on Dalvin Cook in this running game. I think we get Dalvin Cook up to 20 plus touches guaranteed as a running back that, I mean, over the past month, essentially, when he has been back and fully healthy, 31 touches here, then 18, 20, and 27 touches overall on a week-to-week basis. I mean, he is getting targeted out of the backfield. He is that usual three-down running back that you're looking at. I just think that he is not in the same tier as what we have with those other elite options, and it's not the best matchup in the world against the Green Bay Packers. But you know who does have a great matchup and someone that y'all know we've always, always been willing to throw some hate on? Nick Chubb. Now with Nick Chubb, yeah, of course, whenever Kareem Hunt's healthy, I'm going to be lower than consensus on Nick Chubb. But when Kareem Hunt's not in this offense, Nick Chubb at the end of the day is one of the most talented running backs in the NFL, playing behind one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. And this week in particular, going up against the Detroit Lions, I think you can make the argument to have Nick Chubb over Dalvin Cook. I mean, with Chubb at the end of the day, the best week he has had so far this season with his target standpoint is two. I mean, he has had eight targets so far this season. So with the lack of involvement in the receiving game, I will have him one spot behind Dalvin Cook in a PPR format. Nonetheless, I think you could make the argument to have him higher given the great matchup. Now, our next running back will be Austin Eckler. Now with Eckler, y'all know, I mean, this is someone that we love. Of course, he gets everything you want. He gets the usage in the red zone. I know Larry Roundtree vultures the rushing touchdown this past week, but still Eckler's averaging a touchdown a game and he gets the usage in the receiving game and he's playing and a great offense. I mean, he checks pretty much every one of the big boxes that we want from our running backs. He's the running back three so far in a points per game standpoint. One thing that's interesting is going up against the Steelers this week, however, we just saw that the Steelers, I mean, they were very capable in shutting out DeAndre Swift out of the receiving game this past week. Swift did get 33 carries. Nonetheless, I think you have to rank Austin Eckler as that I mean, top 10 running back the past two weeks, he has been down. I mean, 11 points, 14 points. Obviously, that's not what he was giving you at the beginning of the season. But that's why we had Austin Eckler on our buy low running back list, even though it's a tough matchup here against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, our next running back will be Ezekiel Elliott against the Kansas City Chiefs. One thing that I was so surprised to see as I was making these rankings as we are going through and doing the research for the week. Y'all know one thing that I love doing that is my favorite thing in the world is to admit that I am an idiot and that Las Vegas knows way more than I do, right? That's something I'm always willing to admit. They currently have the Dallas Cowboys as three point dogs in this game. Right now, the Kansas City Chiefs are favored by three, which is really interesting. I did not expect that. I honestly thought the Dallas Cowboys were going to be favored here. Nonetheless, I'm stupid. So it is very telling on what we may get from the game flow of this game. This can turn into a full-blown shootout. This can turn into a game where maybe the Kansas City Chiefs are leading by a touchdown throughout the entire game. And we have something similar to the Dallas Cowboys abandoning the run as they did against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the beginning part of the season. For that reason, we can't have Ezekiel Light at the very top of this tier. But at the same time, maybe because this is going to be the highest scoring game of the week, Vegas currently has this as the highest scoring game of the week, as you'd expect. Maybe you get just a ton of points scored for this Dallas Cowboys offense and the touchdown upside to be there for Ezekiel Elliott. 
So this can go one of two ways. I wouldn't be surprised if Ezekiel Elliott was a low end running back two this week. And also, I wouldn't be surprised if he's the running back one overall. I think we're going to have him ranked in a happy medium between the two. Love to know your opinion on Zeke this week. Now, our next running back, and I know, trust me, this list is getting long. We have a lot of running backs in this tier. We're going to go with DeAndre Swift as the fifth running back in this tier with DeAndre Swift. Another tough matchup against the Cleveland Browns here. And of course, the Lions are going to be 10-point dogs in this game. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much with DeAndre Swift. This past week, it's funny, he doesn't even get the usage as a receiver, but he comes out and he has 33 rushing attempts. He's a running back getting every valuable touch out of his backfield, even if there aren't many. I am interested to see if Jamal Williams is going to be coming back. If Jamal Williams comes back, I think that this is actually probably where we have Swift ranked. If Jamal Williams misses again, maybe you make the argument to move him a couple spots higher. He's in this tier nonetheless, as well as Joe Mixon going up against the Las Vegas Raiders. One other thing that I was surprised to see when we were looking at Vegas over-unders and Vegas lines is the fact that this game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Las Vegas Raiders is supposed to be an extremely close one. Right now, Vegas has this as a one-point spread. It's essentially a pick em. I did not expect that in the slightest. I mean, I'm expecting the Cincinnati Bengals to go out there and lead the majority of this game over the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, with this Raiders offense, clearly they're nothing as they were when they had John Gruden, when they had Henry Ruggs. I think that you have to continue to expect that this offense is going to disappoint relative to what you had at the beginning part of the season. And if that's going to be the case with the Cincinnati Bengals leading the majority part of the game, maybe they look to lean on the run a little bit in the second half with Joe Mixon. Nonetheless, he's been getting that Ezekiel Elliott type level workload in Cincinnati. Y'all know how much I loved Mixon coming into the season. What is so funny is I, I wish I could go through and find this is we actually tweeted out why draft Ezekiel Elliott in the first round when you can get Joe Mixon in the second because they were going to have the same exact workloads. And yeah, we got a lot of hate on that. And we're looking at points per game right now. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, 17.9 fantasy points per game. Joe Mixon, 17.7. Now let's go down a tier of running backs. Let's go over to James Conner against the Seattle Seahawks. I actually like this matchup against the Seahawks here. And with James Conner, you're just hoping that we get Kyler Murray back. And I think that if Kyler Murray is able to come back for this Arizona Cardinals offense, they're clearly a top five offense in the NFL with James Conner is a running back that we know he has that touchdown upside and he's beginning to get used as a receiver. Once you remove Chase Edmonds from this offense, no Chase Edmonds means that James Conner is going from being a running back that's seeing about 35% of the snaps to a running back that's seeing about 80% of the snaps in Arizona. It's just a completely different role in this role in this offense is going to lead him to being that running back one, even if it's on the low end. Now, we're only going to have two running backs in this tier, and the other guy is going to be A.J. Dillon, another running back that is filling in for that injury with Aaron Jones. With A.J. Dillon, I'm fine with the matchup that he has against the Minnesota Vikings. Talking about me not knowing anything in predicting these spreads here, I was expecting that the Green Bay Packers were going to be heavy favorites over the Vikings this weekend. Right now, the Packers are favored by two and a half points, so maybe this just isn't a contest where they're able to just run it down over and over and over again with A.J. Dillon, nonetheless, this is going to be an efficient offense. You expect that they are going to have significantly more trips to the red zone than a lot of these other bad offenses like the Chicago Bears. We'll get to David Montgomery later on in the video. And clearly there's that touchdown upside with A.J. Dillon and he's going to be coming away with 20 plus touches. Now let's go down to tier running backs and let's lead it off with Leonard Fournette against the New York Giants. Honestly, I think you may be able to make the argument to have Leonard Fournette up in that same tier with James Conner and A.J. Dillon. I just think that with Leonard Fournette, this is going to be a running back that has that very safe role. I mean, even this past week, the perfect example of like talking about two running backs that are going to be in this tier, Leonard Fournette versus Elijah Mitchell. Just talking about the importance that you have for these running backs to be a receiver out of the backfield in a PPR format. And I know, trust me, I get it. You're tired of hearing me talk about it. Trust me. I understand. But for anybody just now finding this channel, for anybody, I'm trying to convince, okay? I'm, I'm trying to just beat this down in because I know a lot of people, they'll look at a box score and they'll go, hell yes, Elijah Mitchell, Monday night, he comes out, 27 rushing attempts, 91 rushing yards. Great day for Elijah. Great day for Elijah. He comes out, 9.1 fantasy points. Nine fantasy points for Elijah Mitchell. I mean, even when he's crushing, 18 rushing attempts, 107 yards, and the rushing touchdown, 16 fantasy points. Elijah Mitchell hasn't gotten to 20 fantasy points yet so far this season. And this is what's beautiful about Leonard Fournette. Because with Fournette, however, looking at the, I mean, just the role that he has in Tampa, it gives him such a high floor on a week-to-week -week basis 
But going over this game against Washington, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I want to say they get blown out this game. Leonard Fournette is only able to come away with 11 carries, 47 rushing yards. He doesn't come away with a rushing touchdown. It doesn't matter. He's essentially doubling the production you're getting for Elijah Mitchell here because eight receptions out of the backfield, 45 receiving yards. That just on its own is worth 120 rushing yards. Like this usage in the receiving game is so damn important. Leonard Fournette clearly has it. So we're going to have Fournette ranked at the top of this year. We'll have James Robinson in the middle. Nothing to really talk about James Robinson. We know the role he has. It's a tough matchup against the 49ers and it's a bad offense. So we can't be up in that same tier as like guys like Joe Mixon and Ezekiel Elliott, or maybe he has the same role. It's just because the Jacksonville Jaguars offense is so much worse. And then the last running back we'll have here is Elijah Mitchell. We're ranking Elijah Mitchell in this tier because he has a great matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars, where we know that this 49ers offense, they're going to want to run the ball over and over and over again. And I hate to continue to crap on Elijah Mitchell as we obviously have been calling him a sell high running back for pretty much a month now. The issue is he can come out here and he can give you that high floor, given the role that he has in San Francisco. Just you're not going to get access to a running back one ceiling unless he comes away with multiple rushing touchdowns. That's what that's what it takes. You want a top five performance from Elijah Mitchell. He needs two rushing touchdowns just because he's not getting anything as a receiver. Now let's go to our next tier of running backs. Next guy, not much to say just because we don't know. There's been no report on Alvin Kamara at the time of this recording. So we're going to have Mark Ingram here. I'm assuming that Alvin Kamara may miss this week. Just as we said a week ago, Mark Ingram, a bad NFL running back. It doesn't freaking matter when he's going to be playing 90 plus percent of the snaps for the New Orleans Saints. Not a tough matchup at all against the Philadelphia Eagles. So just like we said a week ago, every single league you have Mark Ingram. And I repeat, every single one you go through and you play Mark Ingram. Now, our next running back, Ramadre Stevenson, someone that I was not willing to go out on a limb and say, you play him everywhere a week ago. I actually thought there was some risk in playing him and maybe the role that Brandon Bolden and JJ Taylor were going to have in this offense. Although I love the talent of Ramadre Stevenson, we wanted to see it. We got to see it. And now that tells us with Stevenson, we can go through and we can confidently rely on him every single week. Great matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. There are no reports right now on Damian Harris at the time of this recording. Of course, I'll be live streaming every single night this week as we have live streamed every single night for over 100 nights in a row. So just make sure you go down there and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button. We'll be giving those updates with Alvin Kamara and Damian Harris on a day-to-day basis, not a week-to-week basis. So yeah, of course, subscribe to the channel. And with Stevenson coming away with 20 carries this past week, 100 rushing yards, multiple rushing touchdowns. He was the running back two in fantasy. What you love to see is he also has more targets out of the backfield this past week than Damian Harris has ever had. In his entire NFL career since 2019, fire up Stevenson if Harris misses. And our last running back in this year will be someone that we love the long-term upside with. This week in particular, I don't know if we can get there. Saquon Barkley. Now with Barkley, you're probably going to have to play him. That's why we're ranking him as a mid-running back too. However, we are certain with the workload and what's going to be a pain in the ass is this game's going to be played on Monday night, I'm pretty sure. Let me go through and double check this. But I'm assuming, yeah, this is the Monday night game. So we may be in a situation here that, yeah, Saquon Barkley's practicing, but if he's not clear to play until like Sunday, like are we going to be able to go through and confidently rely on just waiting and holding him out for that Monday night game? Nonetheless, just talking about if he does play this week, maybe we don't get the usual 90% of snaps that we know Barkley will play when he's fully healthy. And it's one of the toughest matchups you could ask for in fantasy football against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's why we're going to have him down here just because it's so hard to know exactly what to do with Barkley right now. Love the long-term upside. We had him on our buy low running back list. Not to buy him now, but to buy him a week from now after he disappoints against the Buccaneers. Now let's go down a tier. Let's lead it off with David Montgomery, a running back that I know so many people are going to want higher than this. Trust me, I hear you. If you're in the premiere right now, I'd imagine that chat is going, Mason, you idiot. Mason, you bum. Where's David Montgomery? He missed David Montgomery. I didn't miss David Montgomery. No. The issue with David Montgomery is this offense is going to be severely capped. Like if we're going to pull up the implied team totals that we have for this week, and of course, this is coming from just Las Vegas spreads, as we have said time and time again, Vegas knows more than I do. Vegas knows more than you do. Yada, yada, yada. You all know what we've said by now. You're looking at the Chicago Bears. I mean, right now, I'm actually surprised to see where Vegas has this Bears offense and that they have them tied for the second lowest point score this week alongside the New York Giants. I figured that they would have the Giants ahead of the Bears. Nonetheless, the offense is so damn capped with Justin Fields. 
It's a really tough matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. So I get it. And yes, he is much more talented than Mark Ingram. He is much more talented than Ramadre Stevenson. It just simply doesn't matter when Vegas is projecting right now the Chicago Bears to walk away with 19 and a half fantasy points where they have New England up there closer to 24. So I would definitely prefer Stevenson. David Montgomery is going to be down in this tier for us. And then another player in a capped offense, but he has a much better matchup, will be Michael Carter with Michael Carter. Love to see Tevin Coleman coming back this past week. Coleman not eating the Michael's workload at all. Instead, he just goes and takes touches away from Ty Johnson, which is obviously the most likely outcome. We're actually happy to see that it's happened now. With Michael Carter, you're going to go through. You're going to play him in a PPR format. He has the role of the receiver. You just can't expect too much because the offense he's playing in. Very similar to what we have with the other running back in this game, Miles Gaskin. Gaskin, a running back we hated coming into the season. But remember why we hated Gaskin coming into the season? Because Malcolm Brown's usage in this offense, and nobody was baking that in. People thought Miles Gaskin was going to be a three-down running back here. And yeah, when you had Malcolm Brown, 9, 5, 13, 2, 5, 5 rushing attempts, just getting nothing. Since Malcolm Brown's left, Miles Gaskin's role has completely changed here. I mean, you have 15, 12, 20, 14 rushing attempts. Now he's averaging about 3.4 yards per carry. Obviously, a lot of that is to do on the offensive line. A lot of that is to do on the offense overall. So I'll say the efficiency isn't there, but the volume is, and it's a good matchup against the New York Jets. So you can't play Miles Gaskin this week. Now our last tier of running backs, let's go to Josh Jacobs leading us off here with Jacobs, someone that I thought was an intriguing buy low candidate, and you have no idea how many best ball leagues that I have Josh Jacobs on underdog fantasy where we are getting him in the sixth round of fantasy drafts and we are taking him in the sixth. Like it seems like Josh Jacobs, every single draft was falling to the late fifth, beginning of the sixth on underdog. I was going through, I was buying the dip. Apparently, I mean, that Kenyon Drake usage is real. And more importantly, we knew Kenyon Drake was going to have the receiving down roll here. You were hoping that they were going to be just handing the ball off at the one yard line to Jacobs over and over again. This year is when you remove Henry Ruggs out of this offense, you're just taking away such a large portion of their ability to move the ball down the field, knowing that this offense can no longer stretch the field, knowing that they can't stack the box now against Josh Jacobs, I'm expecting them to trail in this game against the Cincinnati Bengals. So we will have Jacobs here. You're essentially betting on him the touchdown. Now, Gibson will be our next running back. And with Antonio Gibson, impressed to say the least with what he had against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I would have never seen it coming. I did not even rank him in the top 24 running backs a week ago. The issue is, I mean, his role doesn't change at all here. I mean, he just got the carries between the 20s. I mean, he just got no involvement as a receiving running back out of the backfield. That was all going to J.D. McKissick still. So that's sad to see. But Gibson, I definitely trending in the right direction. And it's a tough matchup against Carolina. Another tough matchup is why we'll have him down here. Now, Clyde Edwards-Alaire will be our next running back with CEH coming back in. I actually like the long-term upside we may have. Now, the issue is the usage you'll have with Daryl Williams right away. With Daryl Williams, I'd naturally assume that he's going to be taking on the long-term, maybe 30 to 35% of the backfield snaps for Kansas City. Maybe with Clyde Edwards-Alaire coming away from this injury right now, just his first week back, they're going to be going through and splitting this as more so a 50-50 backfield. So with Clyde edwards Lair, not going to be too excited to play him now, even though I think in the long term, if you can buy him at a running back three price tag and expect low end running back two production, I think it'd be fantastic. And our last running back, I don't even want to include him. I mean, this list of running backs is going to be so damn bad. I'd imagine this changes as the week goes on for the running back that we would have at running back 23, running back 24. We'll have Devonta Freeman here. I mean, with Freeman, it just kind of sucks. You don't know if Latavius Murray is going to be coming back in. Tough matchup as well, but we know this Baltimore Ravens offense is going to be very efficient. So if you don't have Latavius Murray, you can think about playing Freeman and just hope for the touchdown, even though you want to be excited. Now, of course, thank you so much for supporting the channel and being a part of the flock. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really hope you got something from it. Of course, you can go through and decide to support the channel by joining Underdog Fantasy on Underdog Fantasy. You can check out all those player props you saw at the beginning of the video. You can go get in some drafts. And when you make your first deposit on Underdog Fantasy and you use promo code FLOCK, they match you dollar for dollar on that deposit up to a $100 deposit. So, of course, thank you so much, everybody, for supporting the channel. I hope you have a great day, and I hope I see you in the live stream tonight.